So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Chatter. Today, I am delighted to be joined for the second time by Bob Moriarty, uh, one of the most requested people to come back on the show by people who listen. Uh, and uh, yeah, definitely one of my favorite and most educational interviews I've done in the past. So, Bob, welcome back to the show. It's a genuine pleasure. I, I just wish there was something going on that we could talk about. <laughs> Well, the world is a little less than boring, I think, these days. It's um, you think, yeah, the curse of interesting times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so we're talking about what is it? It's been a week. Seems like longer since uh, Trump had won the U.S. election. Um, and in the past, you've been someone who has been pointing out that the U.S. and the West have been sort of losing their position as the sole global power, um, whether that's financially or um, in terms of economics or just uh, culturally. And now we have Trump at the helm who is here to make America great again. Um, is that, in your opinion, going to happen? Like, has he accelerated or decelerated the West's decline? Okay. The, the very best analogy is when your mother-in-law drives off a cliff in your new Rolls Royce. <laughs> and, and you're kind of, of mixed emotions. Now, uh, the, the election was interesting because they did exactly the same thing that they did in 2016. The mainstream media lies about everything. And, and right up until the last minute, they were trying to pretend that Kamala Harris was, was a contender. And anybody who listened to her, anybody who could stand to listen to her for over 30 seconds realized that she was a brain dead idiot. So Trump was elected. So I, I was happy that Kamala Harris was not elected. And then he started appointing people to his cabinet. And if you follow his appointments, you should be terrified. Leading up to the election, we were at the most dangerous period in world history with a potential nuclear conflict on, in the cards in Ukraine and another potential nuclear war in, in Gaza and the West Bank and Lebanon. The people that Donald Trump have selected for ambassador to the UN, ambassador to Israel, secretary of defense and secretary of state are literally batshit crazy. Let me, let me read some things to you. Yeah, please. Okay, this is uh, the new ambassador to Israel. There's no such thing as a Palestinian. Two-state solution is irrational and unworkable. There's plenty of land in the world for Palestine. There's no such thing as a West Bank. There's no such thing as a settlement. There's no such thing as an occupation. And, and it goes without saying that what he didn't say, that, that's Huckabee, what he didn't say was there's no such thing as a genocide. And the only people in the world who actually see a genocide occurring in the West Bank and Gaza and now in Lebanon are people with eyes. And if they open their eyes, they can see a genocide. It is by every single definition a genocide. It is illegal, it is immoral, it is wrong. I, I was in Vietnam for 20 months, and I was a combat pilot in the F-4, and I controlled hundreds of airstrikes and artillery missions, naval gunfire missions, flying the bird dog. So I am certainly aware of war. 
and how you conduct war. For a very simple reason, you don't kill women and children. If you do, you're just wasting bullets. You shoot at the people who are shooting at you. 70% of the people in Gaza, and the numbers are actually so staggering. Lancet came out two months ago and said there were 186,000 people who had died in Gaza. Okay, the number is substantially higher than 200 or 300,000 now. There are 600,000 people in North Gaza that Israel has starved for the last month. So at the end of the day, the number of people who have been massacred is going to be in hundreds of thousands and perhaps millions of people. Anyone who doesn't see that as genocide, as ethnic cleansing, is, is there's something wrong with them. Now, uh, the, the candidate for the Secretary of Defense called for support for the Third Temple Movement back in 2018. Of course, that, I, I, I'm going to mispronounce this, the al Aska Mosque, one of the holiest sites in Islam, to build the Third Temple, you've got to blow up the mosque. And there are certainly a lot of people in Israel who would support that. However, that that would inflame the entire Muslim world. So the people that Donald Trump has appointed are literally going to drag us kicking and screaming into World War III. Russia has made it absolutely clear that the use of long-range missiles into Russia would would require retaliation. And when they say retaliation, they're certainly talking about the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, very few people have followed this closely, but I did. When Israel attacked Iran recently, there were American pilots flying combat missions. The refueling aircraft for the Israeli airplanes were American aircraft. The United States participated in that, in that attack just as much as Israel did. And based on international law, Israel, uh, Iran would be entirely within their rights to retaliate against American forces in the Middle East. Wow, that's scary. It is scary. Uh, I, I frankly am terrified. I love the idea of, of Elon Musk and uh, participating and trying to cut the cost of government. I love the idea of decreasing taxes. But to do that successfully, you've got to decrease spending. So some of Trump's ideas, I, I mean, frankly, I, I think it would be a great idea to fire all those woke generals. Uh, I'll give you a number that'll tell you what the problem is all by itself. At the time of 9-11, there were nine four-star admirals and generals in the U.S. military. Today, there are 44. What? That's, that, that is totally insane. Like serving? And, not, like, not including people who have retired. That's like 44 serving. Absolutely, on active duty. And, and of course, that's exactly what the problem is. The, the military is totally out of control now. And I am not disparaging the military on the sergeant, and lance corporal, and lieutenant basis, but the leadership at the top is fatally flawed. And, and Trump has said he's going to go in and fire these idiots, and I fully support that. Uh, however, when you include, we're going to go to war against Russia, we're going to go to war against Iran, you're, you're dealing with people who are cl clearly insane. Why do you think he's picked these people? Like the, 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 the entire length of the campaign, basically, the whole idea was Trump was going to be the person who was going to bring peace to these these regions. Um, you know, they, they were like, look, 
the Ukraine war would have never started if I had been in charge. Uh, the Israelis and the, the Palestinians had at least agreed ceasefire. You know, they had the Abraham Accords. It was at least like temporary peace. He was like, look, I'm going to bring this all back. Why has he not appointed people who seem hell-bent on the opposite? Well, uh, you're familiar with the concept of net, net present value. Okay, it's finance. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what the net present value of 30 pieces of silver is. If you take 30 pieces of silver 2,000 years ago, the net present value today is $454 million. Now, how do I know that? Well, $454 million just happens to be the size of the fine in the civil case against Trump and his organization in New York. And what, what most people have missed is the judge in that case required Trump to put up 100% of the bond in advance of an appeal. If he couldn't put up with the money, he didn't get to appeal it. Now, it, it's been downplayed in the media. I'd certainly go back to what I said about the media lies about everything. The New York Supreme Court has actually heard the appeal. And when you watch the, the questions and answers from the various judges on the panel, it's clear that they think that the case in New York was total bullshit. And of course it was total bullshit. But the judge was really slick by ordering the fine to be paid in advance of the appeal. He thought he was killing Trump's ability to appeal. Mm -hmm. But Trump didn't have the money. <laughs> he didn't have $454 million in cash. Mm -hmm. Who came up with the money? Oh, that's a good question. Who did come up with the money? I have no idea. Well, if the payoff is these idiots that he just recommended as Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, and Ambassador to the UN, and Ambassador to Israel, is any clue, I can tell you what religion it was. I don't know who the individual is. Mm. I can just tell you who bought and paid for Donald Trump and who now owns Donald Trump, and that's the scariest thing I've ever heard. Okay, there's it's, it's no question. Everybody in the United States who is aware, anybody over the age of 15 in the United States knows that APAC controls Washington. Okay, there is one United States representative who does not have an APAC monitor, and that's Massey from Tennessee. And APEC went to him and said, look, we're giving an unlimited amount of money for your re-election campaign. All you have to do is sign this document. You sign this document and you agree to vote the way we tell you. And Massey told him to take a hike. He's the only representative who did that. And APEC actually brags about the fact that the people who are anti-APEC, uh, they, they paid for opponents and they won all the elections uh, for the opponents so so the incredible thing is apec brags about owning congress and they do own congress and now somebody owns donald trump so the net present value of 30 pieces of silver is exactly 454 million dollars 2000 years later 54 million. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, but that's horrifying that, that, that they can just buy all of these, uh, these picks because I was, I was quite hopeful that we wouldn't get a bunch of neocons. Oh, we, we not only got a bunch of Yukons, we got the crazies. Uh, I, I'm going to say something and feel free to disagree if for any reason you do. Okay. 
You can go to any mosque in the world or synagogue or church, whether it's Mormon, whether it's Catholic, whether it's Baptist, whether it's Jewish, doesn't make any difference. You can go into any house of worship in the world and there's a few crazies. Okay, and the one rule is you never give guns to the crazies. Okay, we've got to accept the fact that there are crazies in the world and religion tends to attract them. Don't give guns to the crazies. And Donald Trump has just handed nuclear weapons to the crazies. These people make the neocons look sane. I was I was th- I was feeling a little bit more hopeful with Trump being in in and out. Yeah. Well, you know what the good news? There is good news. I'll okay, tell you the okay, good news. Okay. What's the What's the good news? Okay, I'm going to describe what really happened. Okay, this was not a conflict between Harris and Trump. Okay, mm-hmm. I- ignore that. That's bullshit. The American people are sick and tired of the woke bullshit, the COVID bullshit, the six foot three male swimmers who put on a swimsuit, grow their hair long, and want to compete against female swimmers. They're sick and tired of of ESG, they're sick and tired of DEI, they're sick and tired of the entire political arena. And the candidate who represented that was Trump. Now, what Trump doesn't understand is that those people are still out there and they're still pissed and they're quite prepared to take action. What I see him doing is leading up to a revolution, not a civil war, but an absolute revolution. This election was a revolution all by himself. And, and you know, Donald Trump's an opera singer. Were you aware of that? No. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You sure. ever listen to him speak? Yeah. Well, it, it, speak. Yeah, he gets up. He's standing in front of the podium. He goes up to the microphone. He goes, me, 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 me. <laughs> it's Donald Trump. <laughs> But he thinks because he's in love with himself, okay, I I mean, I hate to say this, but even Melania doesn't go for his bullshit anymore. She's not going to move back into the White House. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. I I read that. That's cool. Okay. (laughs) So so we've got a really interesting situation. I, I will tell you, we have the most dangerous cabinet in, in world history, okay, because these people think uh, attacking Iran is a great idea. They think bombing the shit out of civilians in Lebanon is a great idea. They think that long range missiles into Russia, ah, it's no big deal. Um, let's talk about the relative power of Israel versus Iran. Who's the most powerful? Well, it's, I'd say Israel. Really? Yeah, theoretically. I mean, I would say Israel because they have the back end of the whole world. Or oh, really? Okay. In the attack on April 2nd, Iran gave notice in advance that they were going to fire missiles and rockets at Israel. And they were absolutely legal within the, the rules of international war. They let the entire world know what they were going to do and when they did it. And they'd launched about 300 missiles and rockets, 95% of which were shot down. Mm. Who won that battle? Uh, the, the Iranians? Actually, they did. Because there's some information that I know that I didn't tell you. Okay. 
it costs the Iranians a hundred million dollars to attack Israel. It costs what I'm going to call the allies, and this includes the United States, the UK, France, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Israel. It costs them five billion. Five billion. What the the the, the defensive system? Exactly. Okay. The, what's it? The Iron Dome, right? Which doesn't work, by the way. Well, yeah, okay. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> or it's 95, I, 95% effective. <laughs> yeah, well, well, strange enough, you just hit the nail on the head accidentally. When I was a kid, of course, I was born in 1946, and there were still a lot of things being written about World War II, because World War II had been a really big deal. And I remember reading in a magazine or a book when I was, you know, eight years old, 10 years old, 12 years old, something like that. It took 250,000 bullets to kill one enemy soldier. How many of those bullets actually count? So wait, it took it took two hundred fifty thousand. But so for every two hundred fifty thousand bullets made, there was one death. Is, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So of the two hundred fifty thousand, how many of those actually matter? Well, one. One. Okay, because what's the purpose of shooting at somebody? You want to hit them. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I ran attacked three targets how many did they hit all three maybe i don't know all three okay now nobody in the west wants to analyze it correctly because it's too terrified the balance of power in the middle east shifted 180 degrees on april 2nd now the strange thing is the americans know it the israelis know it french know it UK knows it, Saudi Arabia knows it, Jordan knows it, and Iran knows it, and everybody's pretending, ah, oh, no, 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 Israel's still the big dog. No, they're not. Israel got beat by the Houthis, okay? The Houthis have brought Israel's economy to a standstill, okay? And these guys are running around in sandals and cloth caps. So, uh, the situation has changed. The world doesn't want to admit it yet. The United States has B-52s that appear to be loaded with nuclear weapons in the Middle East right now and in Europe right now. You might want to think about the ramifications of that. Is that ever standard practice no even like i don't know 80s 70s 80s like height of the cold war i've never heard of it is that is that meant to be like a, a show of strength uh no it's a show of intentions now uh, uh, here's what's funny how many times have the 17 U.S. intelligence agencies put out reports saying Iran does not have a nuclear weapons program? I mean, I've heard that a lot. Twice. 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 Okay. They come out twice and they said, look, Iran does not have a nuclear weapons program. And the fact of the matter is, Iran doesn't even need a nuclear weapons program. Pakistan would be quite happy to hand them some nukes if, if Iran wanted to borrow them. Their nuclear facilities are underground and well protected. And literally, I'm not even sure a nuclear weapon dropped by either Israel or the United States would be effective. Uh, I, Iran has uh, 74 times the land mass of Israel. Israel happens to, very, to be a very easy target to hit, and Iran happens to be a very hard target to admit. 
we dropped more bombs in Southeast Asia from 19, about 1955 until 1975, more bombs than, than were dropped during World War II. And we didn't have any particular impact. I mean, the United States clearly lost the war, got run out of uh, Southeast Asia. So the idea that the United States can do something is, is fatally flawed. The idea that they would do something, unfortunately, the crazies are going to be in power soon. And I, I, I think there's probably been discussions between Israel, Biden, and Trump saying, you know, why don't we go ahead and get it over with to send the B-52s over there with the nuclear weapons and all the guards and everything required to to uh, protect the B-52. It's a really scary thing. It's something you either have to use it or lose it. So uh, we, we're in for an exceptionally dangerous period of time between now and January 20th. So what happens if, if they decide, like, is it, is that it? Like, if, if someone drops the nuke and we're all dead, would there be immediate retaliatory escalating violence? Of course. It's a war that lasts for about 72 minutes. Yeah. So, but, right, my, my thesis on Trump has always been he loves himself too much to be king of the ashes. Yeah, but he likes been bought. He likes playing golf. You know, you can't when, do that in a nuclear waste, right? When you've taken the 30 pieces of silver, you have an obligation. Well, yeah, but I mean, the 30 pieces of silver is worthless if he has to, you know, kill us all or, you know, take the actions that lead to us all dying. They don't think that far ahead. I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you flat out, and, and I've written uh, a book about my experiences war, and it was really interesting because, you know, I was in combat from uh, July of 1968 until March of 1970. Everybody who writes a, a book about war does it in the next five to ten years, and the reason I didn't is the little switch in your brain that controls spelling, my, my switch is broken. Mm. If I sat down at a typewriter and typed you a letter, okay, not with a computer, with a typewriter, and I sent you a letter, you'd think, damn, you know, I thought Moriarty was smart, but he can't <laughs> even spell. Okay, he thinks you spell the word spell, S-P-E-L. So, so uh, I, I never wrote a book, even though I had a lot of time in combat and had done everything you could do in combat except use nuclear weapons. I, I didn't write about it because I can't spell. I, I, I come across as an illiterate. So then Macintosh came out with computers and they came out with spell check. And I knew there was a God in heaven <laughs> and she had a sense of humor because she included uh, spell check with the first Macintosh computers. And I thought, yeah, I, I have died and gone to heaven. <laughs> so uh, I, I started writing. So I wrote a book and it came out in 2016 about my experiences of war. And what I was doing was writing a book 50 years after the fact. And of course you have a totally different uh, opinion of what you went through back at uh, 50 years before. So it's kind of an interesting book. It's called The Art of Peace. And one of the things I say in the book is nobody wins any war. The only thing that happens in a war is that one side loses more than the other. But nobody wins. Uh, my wife was British, and she was born in 1944, and they were still on rations until 1954. She was 10 years old before they could go buy milk, go buy sugar, go buy meat. Okay, we, we don't even think about that today. And if you ask anybody who won the war, oh, the British and the Americans won the war. Well, that happens to be bullshit too. 
The Russians killed 90% of the Germans who were killed during the war. The Russians won the war. 90%? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And Putin wasn't even invited to the 75th anniversary. Is that just because cause all the major battles was, were on the Eastern Front? Yeah. That that was a, an incredible war. The Russians lost 27 million people. Mm. How many do you think the, the Americans lost? Oh, it's got to be. Maybe half a million, a million? Strange enough, not bad. 425,000. Okay. The Ukrainians have lost twice as many people in two and a half years as the Americans lost in all of World War II. So wow. World War II was actually not a big war for the United States. Is that just is that just Europe or does that count Japan as well? Oh okay. Yeah, reword the question. Sorry, does that does that like do do, do, do those figures like the four hundred and twenty thousand uh dead that's, that's the that's entire war. The entire war, not just within Europe fighting, I mean Correct. Okay. Correct. Wow. But when, when you think about the Russians with a far smaller population, loots of 27 million, and, and this is interesting, and very few people think about the impact of this. Putin's older brother is one of the people killed in World War II. So he understands what it's like to go through a war. Americans don't. Americans are utterly clueless. We got the dumbest generals in, in world history. The I wanted to ask about uh, Tulsi Gabbard, because she's like I don't know, at least outwardly anti-interventionist, and all I, she's been appointed, or at least you know suggested that she'll be appointed as director of national intelligence. Um, no, no, I think I think that's. She had spent, yeah, yeah, but okay. So, but I, I watched be, a lot of people say that she's a Russian asset, and I've never seen any substantiating evidence of that whatsoever. Um, yeah, they said the same thing about Trump. And the funny thing is, yeah. prior to the election, I would have said he is anti uh, the military industrial complex. After the election and after appointing all these idiots, I would say he's owned and operated by the military industrial complex. But Tulsi Gabbard has a excellent record. She is outspoken. <laughs> the funny thing is, if you want to see something really interesting, go back to the the debates for the uh, Democratic presidential primaries and she just destroyed Harris. It, yeah. it was so cool. I mean, it, it was like she took this giant cork and shoved it down her throat. Congresswoman Gabbard, you took issue with Senator Harris confronting Vice President Biden at the last debate. You called it a quote, false accusation that Joe Biden is a racist. What's your response? I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris, your response. Wow, that's amazing. And they're trying to interrupt her in the middle of it as well. That's it's. <laughs> They, they, they can tell that she's getting slaughtered. <laughs> like, quick, yeah. quick, stop her talking, that, that stop, her, stop her telling funny. the truth. <laughs> now, now it's like walking it up to somebody with a baseball bat and just smack them across the face. <laughs> that, that was the most brilliant 30 seconds, I think, in television history. Yeah. 
And that that basically ended her campaign at that time. Like she 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 was done after that debate. Which, yeah. Well, she did the same thing, not Tulsi, but Harris did the same thing this time. She she was facing one of those softball interviews, and they said, "Okay, uh, what would you do different from uh, President Biden?" And her response was. Uh, well, I, I can't think of a thing. <laughs> Jesus, lady, <laughs> we didn't like Biden. We wanted to replace Biden with somebody else. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'd change anything at all. And uh, 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 amazing woman, uh, just world class, stupid. How, how do you think you get, like, right, okay. So people can say that it's like, oh, you know, the political class have lost touch and it's only that, like, you know, the you could say that only idiots are left supporting, like, the Democratic Party or whatever. But, like, the operatives who, who are within the party, right, the people who are getting paid the big bucks, like, they, the, the campaign raised a billion dollars in the 107 days or whatever it was, right? How did they, how did they not realize how dumb she signs like how can you not coach her to have a better answer on on like on anything really but like on even like anyone anytime someone came came to her about groceries and she'd be like well i grew up in a middle class family and I, I, I don't know why she's from the south now but uh, <laughs> and change her yeah, every she, time yeah. the people she was talking to she raised 1.3 billion dollars yeah. okay she outspent trump 10 to 1 and you'd think somebody would sit there and tell her to do something other uh, do you know the one thing they stopped her from doing the laugh cackling yeah the laugh. Well, there, no cackling okay everybody hates the cackling just bite your tongue uh Here's the problem, and and you you actually ask most of a really good question. This is what you get at the end of the empire. You you can go back to Rome in 300, 400 A.D. There there was one uh, period where there were three emperors. I think in one day. You had the Praetorian Guard picking the emperors based on how much money they got. And if you look at the the incident in Pennsylvania where Trump was nearly assassinated, and that that was an absolute miracle. He missed death by five seconds. Okay, if he hadn't turned his head at exactly the right instant his brains would have been splattered all over the podium. That that was the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. Now, I'll give the guy credit. His response was excellent. Okay. The, the Secret Service finally realized, hey, you know, we thought we were going to whack this guy, but, you know, maybe we can pretend that we're, we're protecting him. Uh, that was amazing. I, I mean, the Praetorian Guard for the United States did not give a shit if Donald Trump got killed. And, and strange enough, I, I wouldn't want to come within hand grenade range of Donald Trump today. Yeah, I th well, I mean, I was going to say, I think maybe he was more likely to get assassinated before he put all of these warmongers in his cabinet. No, I am not sure. Well, that, that's exactly my feeling, because I think he just... Uh, gave the military industrial complex a giant blowjob. Yeah. And so many people that, like hope that that uh, wouldn't culture. be the case. I don't know. We'll obviously see how things play out. And I doubt that anyone that is appointed in Trump's cabinet or to very, like, there wasn't very many people who made it from the initial appointments to the end of Trump's last presidency. So I have hope that maybe he will learn before they start dropping bombs i don't think so <laughs> uh, he I, i'll just flat tell you uh, uh, in hindsight we're gonna realize he was bought and paid for mm. and i i wish there was some way of determining who 
loaned him the $454 million because whoever it is, they own Donald Trump today, and he's paying it off. And his appointments are, are just absolutely disgusting. Huckabee, you know, there's no Palestinians. There's no occupation. There's no West Bank. Really? Where have you been for the last 50 years? And uh, to put the crazies in charge, uh, bad things are going to happen. Ooh, well, on a more positive note, um, anyone holding Bitcoin since Trump has been elected has been uh, enjoying watching numbers go up. Um, I, I you know, strange enough, I was hoping you were going to point that out. Uh, <laughs> if, if you own Bitcoin and I don't, and I would, uh, you're a happy camper. I I very much am. I mean, I don't have a loads, but you know, nice to see that that investment going up. Um, is that then okay? So we've seen, yeah, we've seen that it go from sixty eight thousand or whatever it was before the election, right up to ninety three yesterday, and then hover around 88 90 today i don't know where it's at right now but a lot of there's been a lot of speculation that people that governments are thinking of creating some sort of strategic reserve uh the state of pennsylvania announced today that they would be creating or at least passing it trying to pass a bill to create a bitcoin strategic reserve for the state of pennsylvania people have been asking for a long time for you know, a c currency to no longer be just fiat and to be backed by something physical again uh, is are we are we seeing some sort of huge upheaval here in in how we might think about currency over the next decade? Uh, interestingly enough, and I would have to look this up. Perhaps you can look it up while while you're there. Mm -hmm. We are at a full moon. Okay, it was either yesterday or it's today. And uh, Tom McClellan says you get turning points at full moons uh, on a regular basis. And we've had a turning point in gold, and I think we've had a turning point in Bitcoin and a turning point in the dollar. And, and quite bluntly, I wrote the day before the election and said we have started a correction. And, and I don't blame Trump for the correction in gold. I, I think we we were overdue for a correction. Corrections are healthy things. Uh, silver's back below 30 bucks an ounce. Zinc's gone from, I think, 43 cents to 32 cents. Uh, those are all good things. Uh, you need to correct excess. And when I, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin, okay, never owned it. Somebody, somebody here, a, a good friend of mine who actually writes code for Bitcoin companies, uh, wanted to give me a wallet with a, a piece of a Bitcoin in it. And I said, whatever you do, do not do that. Okay. It would be totally unethical <laughs> for me to accept even even one one thousandth of a Bitcoin uh, because I'm dead set against it. I mean, gold has some attributes. Uh, you know, even even paper money has some attributes, and Bitcoin's a bunch of electrons. You know, you got to be a real believer. <laughs> we go to World War Three. Your Bitcoin is not going to be worth much. No, probably not. I mean, I, yeah, but I mean, if we go to World War Three, nothing's going to be worth much. Uh -huh. so. Well, the Russians, Putin has warned about a week ago that the United States and the UK are about to conduct a massive attack on underwater cables. Uh, certainly, the power of the Internet, the power of people like you and me uh, to affect people is a lot bigger than the powers that be actually understood. The oligarchs live in a world of their own. Uh, have you ever picked up a conch shell and put it up to your ear? Yeah. What do you hear? Uh, the sea. Oh, okay. So you pick up a shell mm. 
and you put it up to your ear and you hear the ocean. Well, it's the wind rattling through it. But it sounds you like not the ocean. Hear the ocean. That it's not the ocean, that it's not the sea, that it's an illusion. And those idiots in Washington, D.C. and the oligarchs believe they have power that they don't actually have. What they're doing is they're listening to a conch shell. And while they think they're hearing the ocean, they're not really hearing the ocean. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think they don't have especially I think they feel like they're losing grip on whatever sort of media environment they 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 felt that they had a grip on. I mean, I think it's a long time since pe they've had the, the level of control that they believed they had. But I think it's sort of dawning on them now that the cat's out of the bag a little bit. Like the, the, the independent media environment is showing people too many things. And I think Trump was just a rejection of the the system writ large uh i think i think that I, shows how, how much people hate and detest it i i i think that's very true and if there was a person uh, that, when you go to the store and you buy milk does it come in a carton or does it come in a plastic bottle plastic bottle okay we, we have cartons in the united states and if you were going to take the picture of a person and slap it on the side of a milk carton about disinformation, the very best candidate to be against disinformation would have to be Hillary Clinton. And she came out and said, you know, we need to bring criminal charges against people for disinformation. I was thinking, damn. To say something like this, the woman who invented the whole Russian collusion hoax, do you realize how big your balls would have to be to say that? I mean, the, honestly, to come out and say that anyone needs to be in prison after like acid washing serve, a secret server that had been subpoenaed, I, I would probably just shut up about people breaking the law forever if I had done that. <laughs> these these people are actually stupid okay they are stupid people and they believe their own nonsense and the reason they believe their own nonsense is because they do two things in error one is they talk to each other the other is they listen to each other <laughs> and anybody who does that is going to be living in a fake world. But for Hillary Clinton to come out and even mention the word disinformation, she's trying to still sell uh, the Russian collusion hoax. She was the one who paid for it. And and one thing, uh, let's see, I can't think, oh, oh okay, the, the uh, candidate, Trump's candidate for attorney general uh, is the... Uh, congressman from florida gets case, yeah. i i hope he fires all those stupid bastards and the doj and the fbi there was so much criminal activity going on there that was absolutely disgusting now i think it's fairly obvious i am not a donald trump fan however what was done to donald trump under the protection of the United States government was absolutely disgusting and, and very scary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, there's, there was a, it's a, the amount of time I've had to defend Trump and be like, well, that's not what he said. Or, you know, that's, that didn't happen. Like when people like, for example, the, the very fine people are, thing you know the the oh you know very fine people on both sides like people still don't know that but right before he said those words it was like i'm not talking about the white supremacists like even just they that, don't care yeah they don't care right. it's it's so right. insane that, but like and and to, to, to then have to like say be like well no he didn't say that just just because you would like like an honest conversation about like the and, and that's how you can tell that, that i think that the sort of yeah the establishment that had been or at least like the the people who had, who had been on had their hands on the levers of power for the last you know 
three, four decades, that they felt that they were losing control, especially in the media, is when they just straight up just started lying flat out because the because you have to you have to think that your position is beyond help at that point. You have to you have to be yeah. thinking like we we have to lie straight up or there's no way, you know, we can maintain control. Uh well you have to believe that people are really stupid. And That's and true. I believe on an individual basis that people are stupid. But in the aggregate, I, I don't think so at all. I think that if you will let people make decisions based on what they see as being good for them, some of these things like six foot three males with dick and balls going into a women's, rest, uh, women's changing room pretending he's a female, that, that's a pretty good scam. Okay, and I, I was kind of thinking of, you know, the next time there's a swim meet here, I think I'm, I'm going to put on a dress and see if I can get away with it. But would you get any satisfaction from that? <laughs> You're damn straight I would. Victory. <laughs> my, my wife died five years ago. It gets lonely out. My best friend is male and he has four legs and a fur coat. <laughs> Well, you could probably swim faster than him. Oh, I don't care about swimming. I'm there to watch. <laughs> uh, anyway, Bob, I unfortunately, I'm going to have to run. We're going to have to wrap up. I have to go and have dinner with my girlfriend. Or ah, you had to bring that up. Thanks yeah. very much, Josh. Sorry. Yeah, she's yeah, she's got she's waiting at the restaurant, I think, probably at this point. Oh god. Ah, uh, no, it's all right, it's all right. It's only around the corner. <laughs> you, you you may need to refer to her as your ex girlfriend. My ex -girlfriend. <laughs> uh well, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, uh is there anything I'll put the link for three two one gold in the description below. Uh as ever, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting. Um Lots of insightful things that I did not know. Lots of scary things that I did not know. But always better to be armed with information. Um, yeah, is there anyone you, you want to you wanna plug for people to, to check out? I, I don't think so. One of the things that I would highly encourage people to do is go to Amazon. I, I've written about 10 books, and three of the books made it to the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. And and I, I'm an interesting writer, and you wouldn't realize this, but I'm actually very funny. <laughs> oh, I think people probably realized, haven't listened. If they've made it this far, they should have realized. <laughs> Most of them have slammed the, the phone down by now. Oh, I actually got quite a quite a good um, watch through rate on 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 a lot of the interviews, especially on YouTube. Like high percentage of people finishing it, um, which is good. So you never know how many people have made it right to the end here. But the link will be yeah. in the description for them. But yeah, uh, Bob. I, yeah, I uh, I'll put the link for your Amazon in the description as well for people so they can find it. Uh, good deal. But yeah, uh, thanks very much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, it's always a pleasure, Josh. I appreciate you taking the time and, and good luck with your next girlfriend. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, listeners, real quick. Do you ever find yourself sitting watching the stock market like this? Well, now you could instead be ordering my book like this. It's the story of GameStop. You can purchase it with a hoodie, with acknowledgements, or just with the early backers edition. It's all about the GameStop story. It's the real story, not just what you've seen on films. It's exactly what has happened over the last three and a half years. And with DFE back, I'm finally able to draw a conclusion to my book. Please pre-order it. It really helps me out. And you will get it eventually, I promise. Hopefully this year.